This 2011 iMac is really struggling. It's been sitting in a basement storage for a number of years, the outside's covered with dirt, and there's probably a lot of dust on the inside. I also noticed there's tiny fingerprint stains all around it, probably from the many battles it had with the owner's grandchildren. When I plug it in and it starts up, the fans go full blast and just don't sound right. It also took about 2 minutes and 46 seconds to do a cold startup. That's a long time. And when it finally did start up, it ran very poorly. So in this video, we're going to fix all this by cleaning up the iMac, installing some new RAM, and a brand new solid state drive. And I'm going to show you step by step on how to do it. Let's go. The first thing I'm going to do is check the stats on my iMac. Click on Apple, About This Mac, and your system information should come up. I can see this is a mid-2011 model running macOS Sierra. If I click on the storage tab, I can see my current hard drive, which has 500 gigs capacity. These hard disk drives are much slower and have spinning disks inside that can go bad after 10 years. I'm upgrading to a solid state drive because there's no moving parts and it can load data much faster. This video will show how to physically take out the old hard drive and replace it with a new one, so if you need help copying your data over, I'll have that video linked below. Moving on, I'm going to check the memory, and I can see here that I only have 4 gigs installed. If I want to add more, looking above you can see what type of memory is compatible with this iMac. So in this case I'm going to purchase 133 MHz DDR3 memory. Now that I know it's compatible with my system, I'm ready to install it. And to do that I first need to turn off the computer and unplug it. With it powered down, I gave it a good cleaning. With that cleaned off, I'm going to show you all the tools you'll need to install a new hard drive. This is an electronic screwdriver kit from Tekton. I also like the Bonafide hardware version that has a lot of bits like this. I'll have both kits linked below. Also grab a guitar pick spudger, a cleaning brush, and some fine point tweezers. Also grab a pry tool that has both a flat and a pointed end. It makes things much easier. If you're going to transfer your data from the old hard drive to a new one, you'll want to grab one of these SATA 3 to USB adapters by Sabrand. The hard drive plugs in here and transfers data through the USB cable. Again, if you need help transferring your data, I'll have that video linked below. You'll also need to pick up some RAM which will likely be DDR3. Your system info that we looked up earlier will tell you what type of RAM you can use. SSDs are a lot smaller than the old hard drives, so when you try to put the new SSD in the computer, it won't fit. This adapter from newer tech solves that problem. It takes a second to set it up, so I'm going to do that now. All you do is plug in the SSD and screw it down. And now your SSD is ready to install. The final tools we'll need is this heat sensor and suction kit by OWC. In this silver bag is a heat sensor that triggers the fans when your hard drive gets too hot. If you don't have that sensor, your fans might run all the time. This OWC kit had the best reviewed sensor, so I'll have this and all the other tools linked below. Also included in the kit are screwdrivers as well as these suction cups. These help take off the screen glass, and we're going to do that right now. To start the repair, place the suction cups in the top corners of the screen. Gently pull forward and the glass will separate from the magnets in the corner. When you set the glass down, be very careful and don't lean it against something dirty. This is a close-up of the magnets that were holding down the glass. Unfortunately, there was tons of dust underneath my glass and it was seeping into the screen. If you need to clean it, be very careful with the LCD screen. Speaking of LCD screen, we now need to remove the screws that are holding it down. On the left side of the screen, be careful that you get the correct screws, which are shown here. Don't take out the small silver one. As you take out the screws, be careful as the magnets will pull on them, so have a pair of tweezers around to help pull them out. With the screws out, we need to disconnect the four cables attached to the LCD screen. The first cable is attached in the top left corner. Using a price budger and your fingers, you can dislodge it and pull it back. 
pull back on the plug end, not the wires, or else the wires can break. With that done, we can move to the second wire, which is located in the bottom left corner. Use your price budget or fingers to push back on the lever, and it will come right out. The third wire is this large ribbon cable just below the hard drive. The ribbon cable runs down here from the LCD screen, and to detach it you need to lift up this latch. With the latch open, the ribbon cable will slide right out. Make sure you're supporting the LCD screen as you pull these cables out so it doesn't fall down. The fourth and final wire is located next to the ribbon cable, and it can be detached using your price budget and fingers. Once you've detached the four cables, you can pull out the LCD panel. It's extremely fragile, so make sure to hold the outer edge. On the back side of the LCD panel, you can see the four cables. The three cables are very similar, but you can see that the latch makes the ribbon cable a little different. With the screen removed, we can now take out the hard drive, which is located here. I need to remove these two screws that are holding it down. Gently pull it forward, then carefully lift it up. The SATA and power cables are still attached, so I need to first remove them. Make sure the foam cushion on the back side of the hard drive didn't fall off inside the iMac. We're going to need it to put on the new hard drive later. With the old hard drive out, I'm ready to go clean this thing off, because it's really, really dirty. Having this much dust can cause the circuits to short and can ruin your computer. Before I clean out the motherboard, I want to check out the RAM slots and make sure there's no dirt inside. To get to the RAM port, I need to take out these three screws, and the cover will come right off. When I pulled it off, it was incredibly dirty. It looked like it was full of dirty sheep wool or cotton, or maybe some mice took a vacation in here. I pulled some of that junk out and saw that it was packed deep inside the vents, which is probably why the fans were running full blast and making a weird noise. I pulled some more out and realized I didn't want this all over my office, so I decided to take it outside where I could get it a better cleaning. I grabbed some canned air and some denatured alcohol cleaner and took it outside. I learned these air cans can burn your hand if used too long, so I ended up using this air blower. I got it all cleaned up and was ready to install the new hard drive. There are two placement bolts on the old hard drive that I'll need to remove and put on the new one. There's another bracket on the old hard drive that I'll need to remove. I need to then take the foam cushion from the old one and put it on the same location on the new one. Now I need to place the heat sensor on the new SSD, and I'll power it through the SATA 3 cable. Now I can put the new hard drive in by aligning it with the four sockets here. Before I set it in place, I need to make sure I attach the heat sink. Last thing is to plug in the power, then set it in place. It was much easier to place the SSD if I slid the cables underneath the metal frame. With the SSD in place, I can now tighten the screws down and put everything back together. As a refresher, the four cables we need to install are located here. Grab a picture of the screen so you can easily go back to it. Here's a close-up of all the locations. Now I'm ready for the panel, Make sure to be very careful when setting it in place. Once it's in, I'm ready to connect the cables. Now push in the LCD panel and screw everything back together. There was a little leftover dust from earlier, so I used an air can and a special cloth to clean it all down. With that cleaned off, I can set the glass and the magnets will lock it in place. A 
The final step is to install the new RAM. Underneath you'll find two black tabs that you can pull on to take out the RAM sticks. There's a notch on the metal connection to tell you which way to install it. Align the new RAM sticks with the notch and they'll slide right in. This iMac actually has four RAM slots and my old RAM matched my new 16 gigs, so I later reinstalled it and ended up with 20 gigs total. Now that that's done, I'm gonna power it on and make sure everything's working. It's important when I power it on to hold down Option Command R and P to reset my memory settings. You'll need to hold it down until it resets twice. This will help the Mac reconfigure the new RAM. As the Mac powered on, I could already see the benefits of upgrading because it only took 20 seconds to start up. Also, the programs used to lag, but now they power up almost immediately. Cleaning the fans, upgrading the RAM, and installing a new SSD made this just like a brand new computer. And that's a win. I hope this video gave you the confidence to go out and try this upgrade yourself, and to more importantly, go out and help someone else. If this was helpful, you can check out my other Apple repair videos. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.